Absolutely. You can share your screen. Okay. <laughs> Do you see it okay? Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's a pleasure to be here and to share with you uh, my journey, uh, which is, um, which I uh, wrote on my book, Rebirth at 50. And for, to begin, I, I want to make some disclaims. The first one is that English is not my first language. This is my second presentation in English. And as I say in my book, I, I say that stress is for Parkinson, the same as kryptonite is for Superman. So I'm a bit stressed, so my symptoms uh, and maybe uh, um, rather, uh, yes. Okay, so with this kryptonite, I will uh, go ahead mm -hmm. and continue by saying that I'm not an expert in Parkinson's, so it's not my intention to teach you nothing. So why am I here? I have a, a, a very tough time going through my acceptance process. And I really didn't have peace until I find a what for. And I, I, I want to share with you something that happened to me some weeks ago. Some months ago, I decided to ask for early retirement because I was very tired working. I was uh, doing such a, a great effort to continue working. And I decided to, uh, to ask for early retirement. And it's a very horrible <laughs> process, at least in Uruguay, to, uh, to get uh, the approval to get the early retirement because of an illness. And in that process, uh, I had some interviews. One was with a psychiatrist and he was looking at my medical file and he told me, here it says that uh, you, are, you are going, uh, we are having depression and anxiety. And uh, how, will, how will you uh, explain to me that you are depressed? And I told him what I uh, thought. And uh, I, and I uh, said to him that I didn't want to socialize uh, very often. And he told me, within my file. But here your psychiatrist says that you have been to Mexico uh, to present your book. How can you explain to me that you wanted to go to Mexico to give a conference? What is your book about? And I thought, I'm lost. <laughs> How, how can I convince this psychiatrist that, I, uh, that going through a depression uh, situation, I have wanted to go to Mexico to present my book. So I answered him. My book is about my journey with Parkinson's disease. And given that conference, helped me to find a sense to what is happening to me. So I am only interested and I am, uh, I, I, I want to socialize, to, to tell others what is about going through Parkinson's disease. 
and I <laughs> passed the exam. I I was I I that that psychiatrist um, said yes, it's okay to give her the early retirement. So this is uh, this, this 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 was um, an example to tell you what is this uh, to try to find a what for. I want to spread a message that life doesn't need to end with the diagnosis because that was what I felt, I felt when I got my diagnosis. So I want to, to tell you some, um, some of the backstage of the writing of my book rather than dwell deeply on the, on the book itself. So who I was before the diagnosis, and so this, this can explain uh, how, I, I, how, how I was feeling with the diagnosis. I was living what I thought it was a perfect life, and I had everything under my control. And I, later I, uh, I understood that it was, it, it is something that we share. Uh, patients with persons with Parkinson's share a, a, some characteristics of being perfectionist and controllers and very um, uh, providers. And we, we, we want to, we, 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 we are very, um, uh, hard with ourselves and we, with our uh, duties. So as a child, mm. I was a model child. I took ballet classes. I was the, the, the best student of my class. I took piano classes. I took theater classes. I took uh, English lessons. And as an adult, I played to be a superwoman. Uh, I have. I I wanted to be the the best, and as as a as a as a wife, as a worker, as a friend, as a mother. Uh, and while I was um, preparing this presentation, an image and a situation came to my mind. On the right, the the picture on the right. I was uh, giving a, a class at the university and a student have, had uh, uh, taken his baby to breastfeed. And the baby started crying nonstop. And what I did was ask the student to give me the baby and I crawl the baby to calm him down while I continue mm -hmm. with my class. Uh, do you understand my, my, my English? Yes, perfectly well. Perfectly well. Very good. I'm just going to mute myself because I'm getting feedback. And that's brilliant. Um, just mute myself. So I, I didn't get it. We are, we are saying that actually you're perfectly, perfectly clear and you're doing really yeah. well. Thank you very much, Rancho. Okay. If not, you, you, you tell me. Not worry. So this situation, uh, for me, it's an example that I thought that I could take care of and, and resolve anything that happened uh, around me. I, I, I thought that I could solve any problem and I will go ahead and ahead and ahead and ahead. Um, another thing that um, happened to me is that uh, one time or another, I will cross with these comments, everything that Flor does, she does it well. Sometimes with admiration, 
sometimes with a bit of annoyance, my mother-in-law <laughs> comments mm -hmm. often uh, got, went in that sense, in the later sense. I remember asking my husband, how, how, uh, how, how did Florence cook the home pasta ravioli? How, because she was an expert cooker. And my husband told her, Florencia's ravioli were great, even uh, more um, very, very good. Um, better than yours. Mm -hmm. And she was very unhappy with that, my husband comment. And, and another time he, she asked my husband, and how is Florencia doing with her driving lessons? Mm -hmm. Oh, great. She drives well. Oh, she also drives well. The also was very mm -hmm. uh, clear that she was not happy with me doing everything well or better than she was doing. Another characteristic of me is that I would accept every offered job. I never applied for a job. I was always being offered to join teams. And one day I counted that I had seven bosses because <laughs> I had working at the university, working at, as a consultant, coordinating international or regional uh, teams. And I was trying to do my best at every job. So, to this uh, woman facing the diagnosis of Parkinson's disease was just a bolt of lightning rushing from head to toes. And I remember asking this question, is it now when everything ends? Because that was really what I was thinking. I was working, I, I, I can't uh, find, find a, 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 a situation to describe that I was at the peak of my career. I was working at the presidency of the Republic mm -hmm. in, a, in the highest position that one can achieve. Uh, my, my office overlooked the sea what is the, 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 the top uh, way to, uh, place to, to have an office in, in Montevideo. I had a corner office. So symbolically, I couldn't achieve a, a higher position than, than that. I was respected and consultant in everything that happened around my field of expertise that was uh, childhood policies. And I remember sitting in that desk and, ask, and asking me, is it now when everything ends? And if it is not, how on earth do you continue? Mm -hmm. I went through the list of symptoms and I get and I got terrified because I found them humiliating and embarrassing. People reactions paralyzed me. Some people started to cry when I told them about my diagnosis. Some people told me, think of a miracle. Others told me it is impossible that you have Parkinson's disease. See another doctor. Other changed the, the topic. So after some uh, experiences like that, I decided to lock myself in and not talking to anybody else about my disease. 
after, after the first year, I found in journaling the best tool to help me going through the acceptance process. But it, it was um, just journaling, just uh, for myself, in the most honest way that I could ever write. Uh, nowadays, some, some people tell me, I don't know that you were a writer. And I told, and I tell them, neither did I. <laughs> I, I uh, wrote uh, in, in in my work, but I I, I wrote uh, manuals for nutrition, for um, complementary feeding, for breastfeeding, for lifestyles about nutrition, but I never had written nothing about uh, my emotions and my feelings. But one day I started writing and I said, wow, it feels so good. And it was the first thing ever that I think that I did entirely to please myself and not to please others. And it felt so good. But I started writing some, some, um, some pages, never thinking of publishing them, never. They were very intimate, uh, uh, intimate yeah. um, feelings, uh, very raw, raw uh, feelings. And one day I was walking uh, through the Rambla. The Rambla is an avenue that goes all along the sea in Montevideo. And I was thinking, this couldn't have hit me more in, the, in my core. I felt like the, the November, September 11, uh, uh, hit on, on the, 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 the towers on, on the United States. Because I, I was thinking that every um, characteristic of me was threatened by the disease. And I imagine uh, a dialogue with a an evil fairy in which she said to me, do you think you can have everything under your control? Well, it's turned out that you can't even control your right hand. Can there be anything more symbolic than losing control of your right hand? The fairy continued, do you think you can achieve perfection? Well, it's turned out that you are now visibly imperfect. Can there be anything symbolically more imperfect than a disability? And as visibly imperfect as Parkinson's disease. The fairy insisted, do you think you can do anything you set your mind to? Then you will have to feel in your flesh what it's like to feel vulnerable. Can there be a greater feeling of vulnerability than that you experience when you know you have a disease that will limit you more and more, but you don't even know how and when will it happen? And with the particularity that it is a neurodegenerative disease. And with no compassion, the fairy finished by asking, do you believe that your intelligence is greater than that of the rest? And are you proud of your efficiency and your ability to work? Well, now your brain images show large blue areas of neurons that don't work. Your precious brain is visibly damaged. Nothing could have been more enlightened. So the evil fairy left me at the crossroads. All my identity had been threatened. So 
I had only two options, to sink or to start over. In that mm -hmm. process, I took some decisions. One, I wouldn't give up. I fall and rise one and a thousand times. And I want to share you one of the hardest, hardest and most humiliating situations of that, of one of that falls. I, I have, uh, I, I, I had already begun to write and I have taken that decision of, of starting over and my sister made me an invitation. She had rented a, an apartment in Florencia, in the city of Florence, and she invited me to go with her. And I thought, this is a sign now. My name is Florencia. She is inviting me to the city of Florencia. I must go and I will rebirth in Florencia and my book will be called Rebirth at Florence. <coughs> but I was, when I was looking at, at the city of Florencia from that viewpoint, what I was thinking was, you are so stupid. You didn't learn nothing, anything. You didn't learn anything. You think that you can control even where and when to rebirth. You have learned nothing. There's so much you have to learn still. So I was feeling terrible that I was, I was still thinking that I could control everything. And it took me four years more to to think and to feel that I have finished the, the acceptance process and, I, and that I could think about having rebirth. It occurred four years later that, what, that when I decided to. In those process, creativity had a great role. Uh, very many people think that my Parkinson friendly handbag that I designed and sew by myself is the icon of creativity. But I say that the, the major expression of creativity was to imagine myself in a different version of myself. That was the greatest challenge regarding creativity. So as I started writing, the, the book is it's a reflection of the milestones that I uh, went through my, accept, my acceptance process. The, as I was saying previously, the, the book uh, was not intended to be published but I started writing and it started to, to, I started to name chapters and then started to name parts and then uh, giving a structure of the book. Uh, despite I, 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 I hadn't decided to publish it. So as I, uh, as I was saying, I did it entirely to please myself and not to please others. And I, have, and I had a great time and uh, fun um, choosing the titles of the chapters. For instance, I, I named a chapter, The Vines Shake to the Beat of the Tarot, because I liked it. I, 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 I didn't ask for permission to, to write anything. So the first part, it's, uh, I don't know if you know Mafalda. Mafalda is a character of Kino, an Argentinian 
um, writer, she says, stop the word. I want to get off. Because what I was thinking is that all that acceptance process, I would have preferred to go away the word. I had time to think, to clear my mind and then return, but it was not possible. All this acceptance process occurred while life went on. Second part is a, a new milestone yeah, and that was to discover what good was in Parkinson's disease. And I, I, I named that part um, after uh, something that I heard from Antonia, a blind woman. She told, she said, going past fears to discover the wonders of something different. And I, uh, and I remember thinking if that blind woman can say this and can discover the wonders of the difference, how couldn't I? And uh, I talk about a lot of things uh, here and I finished this part listing what good did Parkinson's bring me. And I was surprised that there was much things on that list that I could, I, that I, that I have imagined before. Third part is about the pre Livodopa era, face to face with the symptoms, having to realize that I was not prepared to be treated as a disabled person. Part four is a part that was asked me to, to, to write uh, by a psychologist that read my drafts. She told me, Florencia, it will be very important that you write something for the others. And I was surprised to, to discover how much I had to tell the others. The others are the health professionals, the family, the team uh, uh, co-workers. And uh, it is a, it, 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 um, it finished being a, a, a very nice uh, part of my book. Honeymoon is when I started with Le Bodopa and I got energy to do uh, many things. And the last part are letters. I was asked by uh, the husband of a friend of mine to write something about my daughters. And it, I, find, I decided to write some letters. And that was a very important milestone to tell my loved ones the more, the more important things that I have to tell them. And I drained the tear tanks, reservoir included, while I wrote these letters. Then I have uh, the people that have uh, read my drafts telling me, Florencia, you must publish your book. Florencia, there's a lot of people that will benefit by reading your book. So I decided, or I was, I was convinced to publish it. And then there were two things that I have to uh, solve. One is that I, 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 I haven't uh, spoken to anybody during five years about mm -hmm. my disease. And I haven't uh, spoken in public about my disease. So 
what 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 was I going was I going to do? So I went to see my therapist and realized that there was nothing wrong to be fragile and strong at the same time, and that if I cry in public or cry in front of a camera of a TV program, there was nothing wrong with that. Uh, it, it, it could have benefits uh, even uh, of more rating if some tears uh, come during that program. The other thing that I have to, to resolve was um, how would I print my book? So I, I went to, to check with some editorials. The answers were, well, you have to pay for it. Uh, and I, had, I would have had to sell my car to pay for the, what I was asked. Or, uh, well, if you have it written, uh, bring it to me and I will see. And I said, no, my time is different. I feel good now. I, I feel strong enough now to share what I want to share. So I decided to go by myself. My daughter uh, took the picture of the uh, cover. She designed it, the, the book because she's an architect. I found help everywhere to do every, every part of the book. And everything was done entirely uh, at home. While my husband cooked, all the family was uh, helping and the book was published. But I discovered that there were no tears while I began to talk because I discovered the heavy backpack that I had over my shoulders. So after not having spoken to almost anyone for five years, I appeared on the TV to talk about my book for the four days after my before my presentation. I took my husband as an escort because I thought I would start crying, but it was the opposite. I felt relief and started to talk and wouldn't stop. Another, You may need to play the clip that you sent me by email. Okay. It doesn't look like it is. Uh, okay. This clip is a part of my presentation, the book presentation, which helped me to understand the weight of the taboo. Would you like me to play? Yes, please. Okay, so I will stop your sharing. I will yes. share the computer for a second. Here we go. Can anyone see it? Yeah. <laughs> 
y decía, ¿cómo pude estar tan tranquila? Yo creo que tenía una desesperación tan grande por sacarme esa mochila de que el tema sea tabú, que estaba fascinada. Y sabés que tengo ganas de pararme en la clase de independencia y tan fuerte, que pasan todas estas cosas porque tengo ganas. Stop sharing. Okay. So, what we what so was the, the public? Do you mind sharing your screen again? Okay. Thank you. So what was the public reaction about? Why were 300 people joining me in my presentation, telling me that I was uh, brave and admirable because of what I was doing? I really get in shock. I didn't expect all those people, all those gifts, all those comments, they made a, a cue to, to, um, to greet me at the end of the presentation. I was, I, I didn't understand. I was thinking, uh, why it is embarrassing to say that one has a neurodegenerative disease and does not feel the same when saying that one has, for example, diabetes? Why? Why do you have, do you have to make such an exhausting effort to try to hide what is happening to you? Why feel embarrassed? Why it, it uh, why, why do you need to be brave and um, to tell that you have a disease? Why? Why is people give, giving me an ovation because I am telling openly about my disease? And I, I started asking people, why didn't you tell me that you knew about my disease? Because nobody except for 10 people told me that they, they knew about my disease. And the answer was out of respect. But they leave, left me alone with my disease. So I started shouting, <laughs> I have Parkinson's disease and that, that's why those all these things happened to me. And the reactions of the public with or without Parkinson's were, it surprised me a lot. The post-publication uh, phase, I, it was impossible to have imagined what happened there. First, it was very strange to know that my book, my book and all those things that I have written for myself were not any, were anymore uh, my, my, mine. The book started traveling. The, I, I started um, giving presentations with my readers. I never rented a conference room to make a presentation. All was done with the, the help of my readers. I started traveling and giving conference outside my country until a uh, COVID pandemic uh, came. And in Mexico, I, I met Marie on the left, and uh, when the pandemic exploded, I thought how to take advantage of adversity. And I called Marie 
and ask her, and ask her, Marie, what are you doing in Mexico nowadays? She's an American living in Mexico. Do, don't you want to translate my book? And she told me, well, yesterday, yesterday I was thinking of translating, on, on, on offering to translate the book. So in record time, Rebirth at 50 came out. And with that, and with time, because of um, lock, uh, locking, uh, locking, uh, one. Well, uh, lockdown. Lockdown, that's right. I had time to to participate in the social uh, uh, nets, and I was surprised by all the things that happened, and that I would have never, never, never have imagined. But the last uh, slide is to tell you that I think that the, the, the most important thing that I have done is to um, put together my Uruguayan readers with young and set Parkinson's disease females. And it has been life-changing for everyone in that group. And for ending, uh, I would like to thank you for letting me uh, find and uh, a sense to what I have gone through. Thank you very much, Florencia. <laughs> I'll stop the recording here. Lovely, Florencia. Lovely. Bueno, muchas gracias.